Greetings citizens of the interweb, it's Matt from Hydro Gaming here this week to present a new video showcasing our single player medieval fantasy RPG that we're creating using the power of the Unreal Engine. Today's episode is a remake of the original episode 5 from a year and a half ago which was completely unwatchable. I imagine you know the drill at this point, if you're new to the series we're going through and re-recording the first 12 episodes because they were just so bad. Seriously I can't even make it through the original episode 5. Anyways, today we're going to be covering some more changes we made to our locomotion system. We added a new movement state for crawling, made some tweaks to how fast our character moves, specifically when sprinting. The system we debuted in episode 2 had the character moving just a little bit too slow for my taste. And lastly, we made some changes to our inverse kinematic system. We topped it all off with a run through of an obstacle course, which I actually still have the footage for so we can look at how our locomotion system operated two years ago. Keep in mind it was a little rough, but I was really still learning the ropes of Unreal Engine. Before we move forward, I just want to say sorry for the delay, I know it's been a couple weeks since the last devlog. As you can probably hear in my voice, I am sick again, my immune system has kinda just given up since I caught that virus no one's allowed to talk about. Beyond being sick, I also have had a lot of important work to do that definitely isn't just farming bounties in preparation for the launch of Lightfall at the end of the month. That would just be silly. Let me know in the comments if you've been doing the same. Roll the intro. So this might sound like a pretty simple thing to form an entire chapter around, but I think it adds a lot of value to the game. Allow me to explain. A player can derive a lot more stimulation by switching between movement states based on complex level terrain. Having to jump over obstacles or crouch and crawl under low hanging objects helps levels avoid becoming stagnant. Nobody wants to just run in a straight line across a flat surface, where's the fun in that? But beyond adding a bit of complexity to a level, crawling has the added benefit of masking loading sections. So with a lot of complex levels comes more objects and polygons. More objects means more shadows being cast, more god rays being created, yada yada yada. This can take up a lot of your PC or gaming console's power to generate. However, if we can break these sections up and use a slower movement speed to allow objects to generate in the background, we can avoid using loading screens. I also think I might integrate crawling into our sneak system, which we'll be covering in detail in a later video. A uh, quick disclaimer, the original video covering sneaking in Nightwatch is already up, but like I keep saying, the original 12 episodes of the series were just terrible, so don't watch it. I would just wait till the remake is up. If you do want to see more recent episodes in the series, start at episode 13 until the remakes of the first 12 episodes are done. The fan consensus seems to be that the series really hit its stride at episode 13. Okay, back to the topic at hand. Crawling will be integrated into the sneak system to add a much slower but more effective form of sneaking. If you're curious, the way I've built the sneaking in Nightwatch is literally the exact same way it works in Skyrim or Fallout. Next chapter. You know I'm now realizing the irony behind the fact that we literally just finished talking about the benefits of moving slower in a game via crawling, and are now moving on to increasing our overall character speed. But whatever, let's increase the speed anyway. I like being able to zoom around the game world by sprinting. There's nothing worse than being slow moving all the time when you shouldn't be. Just think about the dissatisfaction you get when going from the swinging mechanics in Insomniac Spider-Man to the way Spider-Man moves in the Avengers game. The weird thing is, I still kinda wanna try Avengers, let me know in the comments if that game was any good. I think it's been pretty much killed though. I think I actually have it on Steam and just never played it. So not much to cover in this section, just a bit of a speed increase. I actually had a self-made bug that I showed off in the original episode 5 where I accidentally increased the movement speed by a factor much higher than what I meant to. The joke wasn't very funny, but there's the glitch so you can see that there is such a thing as moving too fast. Maybe I'll keep that bug in mind if I ever decide to make a cheap knockoff of the Sonic game. Ironically, Sega actually holds the title of making the most popular cheap knockoff Sonic game. So in the original episode 5, for some reason I spent a lot of time going into detail trying to explain how inverse kinematics worked. The best part is, I didn't even really fully understand it myself at the time, so a lot of my explanation was probably wrong. Basically, what I would like to get across is that we added an inverse kinematics or IK system to our character. 
For the purpose of our game, the way it works here is that a line trace is created below the character to detect the angle of whatever surface the character happens to be standing on. These changes in angle are then applied to the character's legs and feet, so instead of acting like they're standing on flat ground when the character is on a slope surface, their ankles and knees will bend to compensate. In a future episode, much later in the series when we add our horse, episode 21 to be exact, we use the same system and apply it to the horse's legs. That way, our horse changes its walking angle the same way our character does. So now that all of these systems are in place, we can take a look at the footage of the obstacle course to see how it all comes together. I'll just stay quiet for a moment for you to get a look. So, as you can see, it does look pretty rough here, but just for comparison to see how it's improved, here's some footage of later iterations of the locomotion system. Things definitely get a lot better over time, and I'm really happy with how it looks now. If you're just coming from episode 4, you'll probably notice I'm repeating myself here, but just bear with me. If you've seen episode 22, you know that we've created a section for suggestions. I got a lot of helpful suggestions and advice, and we'll be going over those in greater detail in episode 23. But if you do have any ideas for things you'd like to see added to the game, the way it works is you post it here in the comments, and if your idea gets selected, not only will you receive a shoutout, but I'll name either an NPC or a weapon in the game after you. For the first round of shoutouts, you can look forward to those in episode 23, where we're going to start naming some NPCs after commenters. Speaking of shoutouts, this week's developer shoutout goes out to a developer I've been following for quite a while. He goes by Crimson, and he's actually got quite a few releases under his belt, so he's not exactly an amateur. Most recently, he's been working on a shooter roguelite, which looks pretty cool, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. No, 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 my friend. The game I want to see more of is called Crimson's Fantasy. That is the single-player RPG he started three years ago that looked awesome. It had this cool cel-shaded art style, and it kind of felt like Ark, RuneScape, Oblivion, and Breath of the Wild all had a baby. You know what? Forget the whole dev shoutout thing. Everybody go over to Crimson's channel and just watch his Crimson's Fantasy series. Just a heads up, when you see how awesome the game looks only to find out how long it's been since there's been any updates, you'll feel empty inside just like me. Just for fun, if you do end up watching his series, when you get to the last episode, comment down below and ask him to start up the series again, and be sure to tell him who sent you. I've asked for more episodes so many times across multiple video comment sections that I'm sure he'll know who I am. But yeah, subscribe to Crimson and watch the Crimson's Fantasy series. If you like single player RPGs and cel shaded art styles, and you haven't seen the series, you're truly missing out. Link is down below in the description. And that's all I've got for you this week. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nightwatch A Journey, and if you found any of this entertaining or informative, please consider subscribing, dropping a like, and commenting down below something you would love to see added to the game. Like I said before, if your idea gets selected, not only will you receive a shoutout, but I'll name either an NPC or a weapon in the game after you. Anyways, until next time, have a good one, and we'll see you in the next video.